Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for this week's Retro RPG. And this week I would like to present this, Vampire the Masquerade. I kind of dissed this a bit last week when I did Werewolf of the Apocalypse as being more playable. And I didn't want to leave that hanging because I really do like Vampire the Masquerade. It's a piece of art. It's a brilliant, brilliant game, even if I don't find it particularly playable. It is a very interesting idea and I've played it and really enjoyed it as well. So, anybody watching last week's video, please do not take that I was dissing Vampire the Masquerade at all. I do adore it, which is why I'm covering it now. Now, this is the second edition, which I had problems identifying at first, because there's obviously nothing mentioned on the cover here. Inside makes no mention of what edition, although it does say it's copyright 1992 down there, which would make it the second edition, because the first edition came out in 1991. But, if we go to the back cover, it's in big letters. Kind of a strange place to put it, but at least I found out what edition I've got. Now, as I said, the first edition came out in 91, second edition came out in 1992. There was a revised version, came out in 1998. Then the 20th anniversary edition came out in 2011, which is actually the 20th anniversary, unlike the werewolf one. And they've more recently brought out a 5th edition in 2018. So I can only guess that the 20th anniversary edition had some kind of updates. wasn't just a straight reprint. But I don't have it. I only have this one. So that's what we're going to go over. Reading the back cover as we usually do. A, story tell a storytelling game of personal horror. 2nd edition. No one holds command over me. No man, no god, no prince. What is the claim of age for ones who are immortal? What is the claim of power for ones who defy death? Call your damned hunt. We shall see who I drag screaming into hell with me. By Gunter Dorn, Das Ungerhauer Darren? I apologise for my pronunciation. I am very, very British, so I speak all one language. And I don't even speak that particularly well. But anyway, this is by White Wolf and was the start of their World of Darkness series. Uh, vampire is a game, funnily enough, where you play vampires. I really, really like the background for this. In fact, before I go into that, I really, really like the cover. The very plain green marble with the rose on it. You know, thorns drawing blood and all that. I really like red rose. It's a beautiful, simple cover. Slightly embossed uh, logo, slightly difficult to see, as vampires would be difficult to see amongst humanity. Very, very nice. Anyway, as I was saying, I really like the background for Vampire the Masquerade. The setup for vampires in the World of Darkness is biblical. So, basically, it goes all the way back to the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. That their children, Cain and Abel, Cain killed Abel. And the Bible says that Cain was cursed to wander the earth repeating his crime. So vampires taken that to mean that he was turned into a vampire. He needs blood, so he's forced to go around murdering. And that's a fantastic idea. It's making them biblical. Uh, when you look back at uh, the history of the vampires in the game, it goes on to the first city. You know, the vampires lived amongst men. Um, there was peace. And... It's fantastic. I really, really like that biblical depth. It adds so much to a game rather than just making up a history. It's hooking it into something which is real world. Um, perhaps I'm letting my bias towards Christianity slip there. So we've got information here. We've got the damned, which are the vampires themselves. Ghouls. Ghouls in the world of darkness are humans who feed on the blood of vampires. Um, usually vampires give their blood and the ghouls get immortality and access to some of the vampires' abilities from drinking that blood. But they don't have the ability to feed on humans. They need to feed on vampires, which are usually far, far stronger than them. Um, there's also a thing with the blood of vampires that if you feed on it so many times, it might be three times, it might be five, I don't remember imperfectly, but then a bond 
a blood bond forms between you and the person you're feeding from, and basically you fall in love with that person. Um, it's a strong desire for them. It's a strong feeling of protection. So ghouls will tend to be virtual slaves of the vampires they feed on, unless it's some clever ghoul who goes around feeding off various vampires to get the gifts, but avoid being enslaved to them. The embrace is what's called when a vampire drinks your blood and then feeds you with blood and you become another vampire. Um, hunger, well obviously vampires feed on blood, the beast. Um, that's part of what vampire is all about. That the vampires, or the kindred, I notice it mentions there, um, they're constantly fighting against their bestial side. They're constantly fighting against just falling to feeding and losing their humanity. The battle for your humanity is a major, major part of Vampire the Masquerade. Um, childers are the children of vampires. The Masquerade is what the vampires you call their um, hiding from humans. So... The Vampire Society has rules which says they should never reveal their existence to humans, um, they should maintain the masquerade, and therefore humans will not know there's monsters amongst them, we'll think they're just fictional creatures, and we won't hunt them down and kill them. Um, World of the Undead, Diablery, vampires can feed on other vampires, if you drain a more powerful vampire, um, you gain power. Basically, that works as vampires descended from Cain. So Cain fed on vampires and gave them his blood, creating a second generation of vampires. Um, as the you get further and further away from Cain, your vampire blood becomes diluted and you get weaker. Diablery, if you feed on a higher generation vampire, you get to gain his generation and become more powerful. Um... It's obviously not seen as nice in vampire society to go around hunting your elders and killing them. Um, what else have we got here? I'm covering a lot. The riddle, so creating your characters, lots of role-playing stuff. I must comment on the artwork in Vampire the Masquerade. It's not great. Um, I really don't like some of the artwork. Um, some of it's very nice. That's a beautiful piece of artwork. But I don't see it as particularly anything to do with vampires. Um, again, decent enough artwork, but I don't see its connection. Um, I don't really like the artwork, as I've just said. But it does give a very gothic style to the game. And Vampire the Masquerade really um, lent to that gothic style. That was massively popular. You would get basically groups of goths in the 90s playing vampire. They certainly wouldn't play Dungeons and Dragons. So this was one of the first role-playing games to have an overlap outside the role-playing community. That other people would come in and find a role-playing game cool that they could play vampires in. Um, traditions, progeny, so much background information. See what I was reading about the artwork? That's pretty poor, I have to say. I don't know what that's got to do with vampires at all. I'm not a fan of that style of art. And the bloodlines. So, as bloodlines came away from Cain, uh, they took on different abilities. Um, Cain himself would have had all of these abilities, but it seems to have broken down how they use their blood. So, the Bruja are the thug sort of vampires. Gangrel are the gypsies. Um, I'm trying to think, are they the... Uh, they're also the ones, I think, closest to... Uh, they can take beast forms. So if you watch vampire films and they can become a bat or a wolf, the gangrel are the ones which can basically do that. Malkavians are insane vampires. Um, their grip on reality has gone as they've entered the world of vampires and supernatural beings. The Nosferatu are based on the movie Nosferatu. They are deformed, ugly vampires who must skulk around out of sight. 
the Toreador are the artists. Um, I don't know what much more to say about that. They're a bit airy fairy and they tend to take on artists and feed from the blood of the gifted and all that. Tremere are the wizards. They use the blood magic. Uh, Ventru are the leaders of the vampires. And Caitiff are clanless vampires. And that's the way they go. There's other clans been introduced. Um, oh, the Asamite clan, the clan of Arabic assassin vampires, became massively, massively popular. But um, these are the basic ones in the second edition. Well, the governments, the lupines, the magi, the ghouls, obviously, even though this was second edition, they were setting up for werewolves and mages, although they didn't really mention about ghosts or the uh, fairies, the changelings. Generations. Here's what I was saying. So we've got Cain. We've got the second generation, third, fourth, fifth, right up to 14th and 15th. There are exceedingly few kindred of these generations and none beyond. Indeed, those of the 15th generation have failed to sire any progeny. The blood is far too thin, and they are too removed from Cain to be able to pass on the curse. So, by the time you get to 15th generation, basically you're a human with some vampiric abilities. But you'll get the blood is so diluted that you're not really much more than that. As you get closer to Cain, you get much, much more powerful. Um, the third generation... It's believed that Cain destroyed the second generation. The third generation still exists, and they're the founders of the different clans. They are the Antediluvians. And the vampires believe when the Antediluvians wake, they will feed on all vampires, and that will be the end of the world. So the vampires have their own form of the van uh, werewolf apocalypse coming, but it's by granddaddy vampires waking up and killing them. It uses a storyteller system. Um, I don't really think I need to go over that in much more detail. I will kind of flick through. The Book of Nod is a sort of biblical text for vampires. It's one of those things often used in adventures that a page from the Book of Nod will be found and vampires in a city will fight to get access to it. Um, we've got character concepts. Uh, you've got... Benefits and flaws. The usual things. Setting up your Vampire Chronicle, which is basically a campaign in Vampire the Masquerade. I'm really skipping through it here. Documentation, so you've got traits. Up oh, there's the Bruja in a bit more detail. Bruja often have criminal or con punk concepts. Gangrel, as you can see, is a bit more wolfy. Uh, Gangrel often have Drifter or Working Joe concepts. We've got the Malkavians. Malkavians can have any sort of concept. The weirder, the better. The Nosferatu, as I said, they're very, very ugly. Although I guess that one thinks he's particularly dapper. Most Nosferatu have lower class concepts. Toreadors. Um, what do we got? Toreadors have Entertainer or Delan... Delan... I cannot pronounce that word. Oh, I told you I could barely speak English. They're the artists. We've got the Tremere, who are professional and highly educated concepts. Vendru. Select older and more experienced people as neonates. They have upper class concepts. And that's us through the different uh, clans of vampires. They're different abilities. So not only can vampires do usual human things, but some of them can change into animals. They can fade from sight. That's what Obfuscate does. And uh, potents, they can punch harder. They can take damage better. They can see in the dark. Basically, they need to spend blood to do all this, which requires them to go out and feed. And that's my major problem with Vampire. While it allows you to create very, very interesting stories, because every player has to basically have their background. Um, so in a campaign I played in, 
there was a person who had a mansion and they kept lots and lots of people that they would feed on. Another person uh, had some contacts in a bar that they would go and feed on, while other vampires who had no, nothing set up would just have to go out at night, pick up a member of the opposite sex and feed on them using their charm and charisma, or in one case, somebody was so damaged that they were forced to go out and feed on cows and then were attacked by a bunch of farmers hiding in the field in the middle of the night. I'm guessing they had a big vampire problem feeding on their cows. Um, I've left it on this page for a moment because we've got the humanity. The humanity is basically as you do nasty things like kill people rather than just feed on them. You lose humanity by doing kind acts and saving people. You gain humanity at times when you are low on blood and there's a person there you'll need to make a humanity roll as you're sort of stood next to them looking at the pulsing vein in their neck and whether you need to feed on them whether you can resist just turning around and killing someone for the blood when you need it um when you're threatened just going berserk and destroying the people around you with your vampiric powers and that's what humanity is so it's a struggle if it's too much, then it's very easy to lose, because doing almost anything will lose you points. Whereas if it's too l low, you can't resist doing horrible, horrible things and just slipping down into being a monster, which will be recognised, it'll break the masquerade, so other vampires will hunt you down or humans will just kill you. Um, willpower is your way of resisting um, mental effects. Your blood pool is how much blood... Um, it lists different animals as well so feeding on rats can get you a couple of points and um, that's what the Nosferatu often do because they cannot charisma their way through to attract people to feed on experience points rebirth um, vampires are actually quite hard to kill and they can enter a state called torpor where basically they're run out of blood and their body's inactive but they, if they're given blood they'll return to life they also happen to go into that state if they're very, very cold so while a vampire doesn't need to uh, breathe if he falls into the deep sea the cold will freeze him and force him into torpor um combat some firearms which will do you no good against vampires mainly Appendix, which details through different NPCs you can use against the players and werewolves um, some concepts for a campaign some NPCs to use I'm trying to flip through to get to the end where the character sheet is so I can briefly go over that um, an adventure there what? Do we not have a character sheet? Yes, we do. There it is hidden. A one page character sheet. Some last words from Mark Rainhagen, the creator of Vampire and the World of Darkness, talking about how we've all got a demon inside of us. Um, an advert for Vampire Dark Ages, which I have and like very much. The standard character sheet, so it's a standard uh, White Wolf character sheet, your details at the top, your attributes there, you choose when a character creation whether you're spending points on physical, social or mental, they have different priorities, so you can create a very mentally based character or physically based. You've got skills below, although they're written as abilities, talent, skills and knowledge, so you can set your priority for them. Your talents will tend to be more physical based, skills are um, more practical things and knowledge skills are just mental ones, so things you would know as knowledge is. I've just used the definition of knowledge. Oh, well. Um, so as in most of the uh, storyteller games, you take one of the physical attributes, you add it to uh, a knowledge. So brawling will be brawl plus strength, but sometimes, it, you know, if you're wrestling, it might be brawl plus stamina. 
and you can mix them about. Um, if you're trying to analyse somebody's fighting ability, it might be brawl plus intelligence or perception as you're watching their fighting style and trying to study it. It's very flexible. I really like the concept of that. It takes a fairly few number of skills and makes a lot of possibilities. You've got your vampiric disciplines, um, backgrounds which you create during character creation, uh, virtues, your vanity, willpower and blood pool, the standard seven um, health levels, and that's the standard uh, vampire character sheet. It's just one page. You don't tend to have lots of equipment and things. Although, I suppose, if you printed that out, you could just write them on the back. Oh, and I'd vote for Changeling. And that is Vampire the Masquerade. As I've said, it's a game I absolutely adore. Um, it's a very, very beautiful game. With some fantastic ideas. And a brilliant, brilliant setup with the links into uh, biblical history. Anyway, I feel like I've kind of lost out, lost steam at the end here, but thank you very, very much for watching through to the end if you have. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing at all, but most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye.